this next speaker uh, is an interesting person. <laughs> um, I've known him since I've come into the body of Christ, and um, uh, he's one of those individuals that when you first obey the gospel, it's very difficult for you not to uh, get to know him. He's that uh, attracting and that uh, interesting. Um, I've got to know him even more personally over the last three years uh, in his um, uh, dedication and commitment to helping to the East End Church to flourish and to grow. And um, I've got to know him very intimately in a way that I found that he's a very adventurous person. <laughs> very adventurous. Um, and he's done many things. Um, I'm pretty sure you all probably follow him. Uh, he likes to let everybody know that he has um, some things in life he wants to do. And um, one of the greatest things that he has um, uh, done uh, even more proficiently recently in adventures is uh, to take the uh, pulpit and to uh, be more prevalent in presenting the Word of God. And he's done it on numerous occasions down at the East, and um, uh, he is a wonderful presenter of God's Word. He presents in a way that is unique and also very, very, very motivational, very uplifting. You know him from his bubbly spirit. <laughs> it's just bubbling over so much he can't contain. <laughs> uh, so uh, after the next song, you're going to hear the most bubbly preacher <laughs> you've ever heard. None other than Brother Ramon Ramirez. <laughs> to uh, 3, uh, four, sorry, 589, 589, and I invite you to stand with me. We'll be sitting all through uh, uh, Romano's um, message. Let's stretch our limbs a little bit as we sing 589, leaning on the everlasting arms. <laughs> I'm telling you what I Oh, my God. 
Sunday evening, Brother Kingsley used that same scripture. I wrote that down. You have to show me my notes right there. You need six here, right? And then Brother Craig Laws used it. But Kerman, you didn't use it. Kerman, you didn't use it. Laws <laughs> <laughs> works. I just want to thank both brother and here because you all make me feel comfortable. Over the years that I'm being a Christian, I just gotta thank all those who have helped me throughout my Christian walk. Hey, 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 hey. I was talking to some children on one Friday night, maybe about three weeks ago, and they wouldn't let me leave. They just kept talking to me, kept talking to me. Even the young ones are encouraging. I just hey, don't add that to my time. I just want to <laughs> I've got to thank my wife Carol. Not, hey, six, I'm going to thank my wife Carol. There is nothing better than to have somebody in the household that's a Christian in our household. I've had a habit of when I was up in here, right here, where I would go, go to people that I saw that were single, that I was proud of. And I would say to them that I'm proud of them because I know what it's like when you just don't feel like it. There was many a time that I had to pay honest. I just didn't feel like it. I just didn't feel like it at all. It only takes something subtle for Carol to just get up, and guess what will happen? Okay, hey. up and go. And guess what? I would have the most blessed worship service that I've never had. And there's things that you can actually feel like it. All right? Anyway, there goes my things. All right, there goes my I'm going to step down here where he gets the mic all set up. He said I'm a buddy preacher. So, if I can ask the brethren, Brother Oliver, to turn the lights down on one half of the auditorium. Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, here we go, ready? But what I want you to do, a little exercise with you, is to close your eyes, and I want you to focus on relaxing, okay? A little exercise. I want you to focus on relaxing. In your mind, I want you to go to your quiet place. Everybody has a different quiet place. Maybe it's a dark room. Maybe it's in your bed, day in on your back, the lights turned down low, then it's pulled up a little tight. In that way, it's just you, yourself, and whatever your name is, it's just you, your quiet place. I want you to go there, and I want you to relax, and I want you to examine this question. What is the most important, what is the most important Thing to you in this world. What in this world is most precious to you? Think about it in your quiet place. Just you, yourself, and whatever your name is. Maybe it's your children. Maybe it's your spouse. <coughs> Maybe it's your parents. Maybe you've worked hard for a career and you like your job, you get a nice good paycheck. Maybe that's important to you. Maybe God has blessed you with a home, a lovely home, and you're proud to have that home. And every time you go there, you feel good. 
Maybe you have a nice car, a sporty car, and you feel proud to drive that, that car around going to use it forever. What is the most important thing to you in this world? Amen? Okay, open up your, lock, your eyes, you turn the lights on. Turn in, in your Bibles to, to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. So, if you this. John 17, verse 18 to 19. The Bible says, As thou hast sent me, underline sent me, or oh, we went through this lesson, this um, scripture. Underline sent me into the world. Underline the world. Even so have I sent them. Underline sent them into the world. Verse 19 goes on to say, as for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified, underline sanctified, through the truth. Amen? Yes. What time to say amen? amen. Through amen. the amen. truth. Amen. Well, Paul preached about thy word is true. Thy word is true. See how things work together? Two brothers are preaching, two individuals are preaching, and they're going to end up preaching about the same thing, the truth, right? Amen. I want to speak to you tonight from the topic, taking the truth into the world. Amen? Amen. Taking the right. truth into the world. Awesome. Now, if we're going to examine this correctly, properly, we're going to break it down into three things, taking the truth into the world. And if we're honest with ourselves, we need to understand what this thing um, entails. The world is this big place. It's bigger than Bermuda. Bermuda's only nine parishes, about 21 miles long. The world is a huge place. I think it's over 25,000 miles at the equator. The world has seven continents and over 195 countries, nations. We're taking the truth into the world we're going to understand what we're getting ourselves into. It's bigger than yeah. just in your neighborhood. It's bigger than Bermuda. But taking the truth into the world, we're going to do that properly. Have you got to get your mind into this thing? Is the world is a big place. There's over 7 billion people on the planet. 7 billion people. And I looked it up because I didn't know. But every second, every second, one, two, three, four, four people are being born every second. We're going to be taking the truth into the world. We're going to have a good understanding what we're talking about. It's this physical world that we're around. God blesses you with five different senses. He blesses you with the sense of hearing, the sense of seeing, the sense of smelling, the sense of taste, and what's the last one? The sense of eye. Pretty smart. Pretty smart. Ah, oh boy. All right. The physical world, we're going to have a good understanding. We're taking the truth into the, to the world is that we're talking about this physical world, this big place, and it's all our duty. It's our duty as Christians to do, to do the job. Amen? Not to keep this truth Amen. to ourselves, but to take it out into the world. Agree? You understand that? Yeah. But we also got to understand that the world is not just a physical place. That the world is also a spiritual world. It's just like there's a physical world, there's a spiritual world. Amen? amen. It's a good time to say amen. 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 All right. Look at John chapter um, 17, verse 11. The Bible says, I am no more where? in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Didn't Brother Paul just read that? Amen. amen. Good time to say amen. amen. Right. So I turn to verse um, 14. The Bible says, I have given them thy word, and the world hated them, because what? They, not they the are not of this world. Didn't I tell you? It's a spiritual world, a spiritual world, and a physical world. Amen? Yeah. We're going to take the truth into the world. We're going to have a good understanding of what we're working with here. That's right. Yeah. If not, we're going to get sidetracked and get in a situation that we don't even know where, where we are, what we're doing, and how to actually do it. Amen? Amen. Amen. In, John, in 1 John chapter 4, and verse 4, I'm not going to wait for you. It says, Ye are of God, little children, 
and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is well in the physical world. Amen? All right. And verse 5, if we're talking about the physical world and the spiritual world, physical world, verse 5 says, they are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world hear them. Understand that? Well, if you're of the world, you're really going to understand that. Because people of the world, they're going to be talking about what's on TV. They're going to be talking about what they're bored. They're going to be talking about other people's business. Those are the things that they're going to be talking about in the world. Amen? There's no way a person that's in the world, right, is going to talk about spiritual things. Amen. And know what they're talking about. Amen? amen. amen. It's the time to say amen. amen. Verse 6. We are of God. That's we, Christians. Those are of God. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. Time to say amen. Hear he that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby, this is how we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Boy. Amen. Uh, you ever realize, I don't know if you realize or not, that when spiritual people are talking, they're talking about spiritual things. And if you're talking about spiritual things, it's a biblical concept. It tells you right there. You're talking about spiritual things that people in the world don't have any idea what you're talking about. They hear your words, but they don't understand what you're talking about. You ever sat around a group of people that speak in a different language? Yeah. You see that body language? I sat to dinner one time. He was speaking French and I um, can't remember, I think it was German, right? And you know, all smiling and talking, that, and every now and again they'll kick in and speak English, right? But when they're speaking their other language, I don't know what they're talking about. It's the same thing. When, when, when spiritual people are talking spiritual things, people of the world have no idea what you're talking Amen. about. They might hear your words, Amen. but they don't know what you're talking about. Amen. 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 This point. Yeah. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Didn't Paul um, use this lesson? Because you guys are working together. The Bible says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The unrighteous, those people that are in the world, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, if you're a bum union, if you're a bum union, you know what I'm saying? If you're a bum union, you do certain things. If you're a bum union, you're actually a British, British dependent. You answer to the Queen. United Kingdom. But that's a physical kingdom. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the kingdom of God. Not a physical kingdom. We're talking about a spiritual kingdom. Amen? Amen. And as Brother Paul explained, all oh, those list of people are those people that are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. <coughs> Taking the truth into the world, we've got to fully understand and wrap our head around that this world that we're talking about is, is two different worlds. Amen? amen? Good time to say amen. amen. Taking the truth into the world. Paul said, a poet has preached that word is true. True. It's amazing when you get a, 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 a list of brethren to speak on one chapter the diversity of the lessons that are revealed. Yeah. And me and Paul are using the same scripture text and totally two different lessons. Amen? Yeah. So I'm going to keep this short as possible. The truth. I don't even want to say that there's only one truth. Yeah. And if there's only one truth, yeah. how many non-truths can there possibly be? <laughs> oh. I want to answer. As many as you want? Uh, I thought there's a lot like magic word called infinity that I have. It just blows my mind. If, there, if there's only one truth, there can be an infinite number of non-truths. Amen. 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 I asked um, Brother Floyd, and I, well, I tell him I'm going to use him as a guinea pig. Right, Brother Floyd? <laughs> I've known Brother Floyd for a long time. This is sort of like a joke, but I'm going to make a point out. I've known Brother Floyd for a long time. Actually, I've known him for a long time. So much so that he actually had hair on his head. <laughs> and that's right now. But I always know Brother Floyd to be a very smart guy. And one time we were up to our, um, our fellowship, and we actually played chess. And I let him meet me. I didn't let him beat me because I wanted 
He helped you know that he's a smart guy. <laughs> And you're laughing. Sister Delight, only marry Brother Floyd because he's a smart guy. The only thing she married him for his books. <laughs> God, the thing. Take that off my time, bro. If I ask the smart Brother Floyd, he's a smart guy, what's well, one plus one? I'm sure Brother Floyd is a smart guy. After a couple of minutes, he's <laughs> three minutes out of him. One plus one. You might have got a piece of paper out of it. One plus one, stick out of the belly, put his line down. But I'm sure I'm more than confident, right, that Brother Floyd, being so smart, will give me the correct answer. Amen? Amen. I thought I'd use this as an um, example of the world's technology. Everybody seems to have one of these, right? Even though this world is a huge place, you can take this device and contact somebody on the other side of the planet. Yeah. Call somebody, well, you didn't call it, call them. You say contact. Contact somebody on the other side of the planet, Japan, right? And ask them the exact same question. That I asked Brother Ball. I'm Brother Floyd. Amen? Yeah. And then I did, I contacted, well, I would if I contacted a thousand other people all around the planet, in 195 different nations of the world, and I asked them the same question. I am pretty confident 99.99999% of the people would all give me the same answer, right? Got the answer there, Floyd? One plus one is three. Hey, right. <laughs> Can't say amen. <laughs> all right, one plus one is two, right? But how come? How come? And how why is it so that upon the earth, Something simple as a truth that's one plus one, no matter where you go wow. on the planet, the answer is always two. Come on. Because it's the truth. Amen? Yeah. But taking the truth into the world, right, is something that we're going to wrap our head around. Turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4 that everybody seems to use. I had it first. <laughs> Ephesians 4, verse 4. Talking about the one truth, right? You go anywhere on the planet, anybody could tell you, no matter what language it is, what one plus one is. And the answer is the truth, if you didn't know for it. But in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4, it says, There is one God and one Spirit, even as you're called in how many hoops of your one. Just one. Amen. We're trying to say amen. There's one Lord, one faith. Uh -oh. And one baptism. Yeah. If one plus one is two all over the world, and that's the truth, if one Lord, one faith, and one baptism is one Lord, one Father of all, in other words, one Creator, one beginning of all, who is above all, through you all, and in you all. Yeah. The question is if there's only one truth, why are there so many so-called other truths when it comes to taking the truth into the world? Amen. Amazing, huh? That's amazing. It's amazing. It's the preaching. Amen. In Romans chapter 3, verse 4, the Bible says, many of you put it, but I'm going to read. Let God be true, but every man, every man, Woman, chick, a child, be a liar. It's not calling anybody names, because that's the Bible. Let God be true and every man a liar. That's how you keep the truth the truth. Because a lot of people are misguided by a truth that is guided by man. Amen? We're trying to say amen. But taking the truth into the world, I'd like to present tonight that the truth that we should be taking into the world is this thing called the gospel truth. Yeah. The gospel truth. Yeah. The death, the burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. The gospel truth. There are many truths in this Bible. There are many truths. But first and foremost, is the gospel truth. Because that's God's power man. to save man's soul. Amen. Amen. Turn with me to Philippians 2, chapter 8. I'm going to run through this. Okay. 
actually. I'm going to go a little higher. I saw from number one. If there be any, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, mercies, if, 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 fulfill, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like Minded, oneness, right? Like minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Amen? That's a wedge. Separate, that's an operation of separation. Amen? But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better. Then that's a root right there. Look not every man on his own things, but every man according on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We can learn a lot from Christ Jesus. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But made himself of no reputation, and took upon himself the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he still humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. Oh, boy. Death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Verse 10. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and everything in realm, in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. And I tell you, there's a physical world and a spiritual world. Amen? We're going to take the truth into the world. We're going to take the one truth. There are a lot of non-truths. We're going to take the one truth. And first of all, we're going to take the gospel truth. The gospel truth. Amen? Good time to say amen. Amen. In Matthew 28, verse 18, I know you will know the Bible says, And Jesus came unto them, came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me. No. Yeah. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Amen? All power. He has all authority. All authority. Jesus has all authority, and I know you know this. He has all, and I know you're all smart. And if he started in heaven and in earth, there's no other place to have it. Amen. Agree? Amen. Okay. And it's because of this authority, he authorizes, he commissions all Christians, all those who have obeyed the gospel, to go ye therefore and teach all nations. Amen? Yes. But teach them what? Truth. The gospel of truth. Because it goes on to say, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. Brother Bruno had brought up, I'm pretty sure with Brother Bruno had brought up Acts chapter 8, and the Ethiopian unit was um, reading Isaiah. And Philip joined into the chariot and asked him, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, how can I understand unless a man got it? And he started at the same scripture. Yes. No matter what scripture you are in the Bible, the first thing that you should do preach the gospel truth. Amen. Amen. Amen? Because the evidence is, when they came up upon a certain water, the Ethiopian eunuch said, see, here's water. What do you mean me to be baptized? Amen? Amen. 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 Amen? The Bible goes on to say, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded. Amen? Yes. Amen. We're going to teach them the gospel. 
They're going to obey the gospel and come into the body of Christ. And then you're going to teach them to obey old things. Because everybody's got certain baggage. I'm still working on it. I don't know old things. I'm still being taught to obey the gospel. I mean, to, to, um, to um, do everything that has been commanded. I'm still learning. Amen? Amen. Mark chapter 16, verse um, 15 says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to you. And you preach it. Amen? Taking the truth into the world. I want to say that's the easy part. The hard part is our human nature. Oh God, I've got it. I'm going to put my head down saying I'm just as bad as anybody else. The problem is that we don't do what we're supposed to do. And we don't do it wholeheartedly. We know that we can do a lot better, but we don't do it. It's our human nature. It's not your fault. It's not my fault. It's just something that we have to consistently work on. Taking the truth into the world. We always have these silly excuses. And I ain't calling anybody name. I'm calling myself name. Because I come up with them myself. I'm too busy to do this. Uh, I'm working to do that. Um, maybe it's somebody else's job. Maybe um, the, the preacher is, is better um, prepared to do Bible studies. Maybe there. Um, maybe it's the job of the evangelistic committee, and they're good at doing it. And certain um, people are always doing studies, so I don't need to work so hard, right? It's our all of our responsibility to take the gospel to all the world. Amen? Yes. Uh, we come up with some, a lot of excuses. Amen? In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 4, the Bible says, you are chosen of God. You're precious. In verse 5 it says, you are lively stones. You're not like that stone on the wall. You're lively. You are to build up a spiritual house, not a house, not a building like this, that it's a physical house. A spiritual house. Amen? You're a royal priesthood. You're, it's your job. You're all priests. And you're, good, you're supposed to go out. You have permission to go out and preach the, um, the truth of the gospel. Amen? Amen. Uh, so what will provoke us? What is the solution? What will provoke us to take the truth into the world? I'm going to go back to that question. What is the most precious thing that you have in the world today. Amen. What's going to provoke us? I want you to focus on what is the most precious thing Amen. in the world that you have today. If it was your car, if it was your spouse, if it was your children, it might have been that car or something else, maybe it's your money, maybe it's a diamond that you have in your safety deposit box. <laughs> I would like to present to you that that's the problem. The most important thing that you can possibly have in this world is the word of God. Amen? Yeah. 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 In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9, the Bible says, Lay not up to yourselves treasures upon the earth, where moth or rust do corrupt, and thieves break through and steal. Yeah. But lay up upon yourselves treasures in heaven, to yeah. little places, not upon the earth, what you have upon the earth ain't gonna last long. Yeah, right. Store your treasures in heaven, where moth and rust don't corrupt, neither do men break through and nor steal. And the punchline is, where are your treasures and where your heart be also. That's the answer. We're taking the truth into the world. What's gonna provoke us to do that is putting a value on what this good news of the gospel is. Amen. Bible says in Luke chapter 11, no man, no man lighted a candle and hide it in a secret place or put it under a bush, but he put it on a candlestick where all those who enter in may see the light. Yeah, yeah. Jesus is the light of the world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You are to take that word of God, Jesus, and shine that light into this dark world. It's yeah. our obligation, yeah. your permission, by Jesus Christ yes. to do this. Amen? Amen. Amen? We all have talents and abilities. All of us have talents and abilities. Whether they're big, small, maybe you have five talents. Maybe you have three talents. Maybe you only have one talent. God expects you to use your talent yeah. to the best of your ability. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? Every 
everybody has the ability to take this tree out into the world. Right? I want to say, what's your excuse? But you already know what your excuse is, and you need to work on it. All right? All right. Taking the tree into the world. That's my time, bro. It's all. It's all. <laughs> You've heard God's word. You've heard enough of the gospel truth. You've heard the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior in Jesus Christ. You've heard. And that is the power of God to save you. Today could be your lucky day. Today could be the most important day of your life. I know you certainly like celebrate your birthday when you were born. But today, wrap your head around it. Right now could be the most important day of your life. Because you can obey the most precious thing that you could possibly have. And that's the good news of the gospel. Death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You can also take this opportunity, if you're already a Christian, and you have a um, more um, reproach upon the um, church, you can ask the brethren to pray on your behalf. Amen? Right now will be the most important time of your life. God said in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, by faith, it is impossible to please him. Impossible to please him. You might ask, how do you get faith? In Romans 10, verse 17, it said, faith cometh by hearing. Hearing the word of God, right? You've heard the word of God. You've heard the word. In Luke, um, in Luke chapter 3 and verse 13, 13 and 3, the Bible says, I tell you nay, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Amen? That means to change your mind. <coughs> no sense living according to the world. That's live according to God's word. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. It's always said, Confession. In Matthew 10, verse 32 and 33. You get the best deal in time. The Bible says, Jesus says, if you confess me before man, him will I confess you before my Father, which is in heaven. And the reason why that's the best deal in time is because you don't have nothing to offer God. You have absolutely nothing to offer God. But God has everything to offer you. Amen. That's me Amen. 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 That's me before men. And Lord, I don't think I read but the last day, every knee is going to bow. And every tongue is going to confess. In any ways. So you either confess it today, Fasting the last day. Yeah. So much yeah. better. Fasting yeah. today. Yeah. They complete your obedience by being baptized in water for the remission of your sins. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, because Jews had just crucified the Christ, they thought they were doing the best thing. But when they found out the gospel news that that same Jesus who they crucified on the cross was both, both Lord and and Christ. Something happened. They were pricked in their heart because they thought they were doing the right thing. And some of you might thought, have thinking that you have been living your life according to the right way. But you've heard the truth. The truth will set you free. Pricked in their heart. And they asked the most important question that they could have ever asked at the time. Man and brother, what shall we do? And Peter said with all his buildings, repent and be baptized. Right. Every one of you, for a remission of sins. Amen. Amen. And then you receive the gift. Amen. So many spiritual blessings in Christ. Our time is well spent. I'm sure I ran over. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Amen. 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 I just stand to sing the song of invitation. It's God's invitation to make today the best day of your life. You come forward and respond to the gospel, what you the gospel, that God's power to save your soul. Six hundred.